What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're gonna be going through our core data journey learning some more core data and we're gonna actually be doing the update and delete today um, continuing on from the create and read which we did a couple weeks ago so let's go ahead and open our project back up if you don't have the project then feel free to check the link in the description below and you can download the project right there you can also go back to the other video um, where I actually show you how to get up to this point because we started from scratch over there so anyways let's get into it uh, let's take a look at what we got and you know you know we got this sexy dark mode going look at look at my beautiful interface oh man I love it all right so since we are in Xcode 10 right now I have this little warning I'm just gonna do the update um, I'm gonna do the update right now it's going to pretty much actually you know yeah it's gonna pretty much just go through and update our system to 4.2 um, just so that uh, you know we we work with the best of the best best of the best of the best so right with honors so we're just gonna update that all it did was it it changed our app delegate over here to they changed it to UI application dot launch keys so yeah that's all they did anyways let's get back into the actual core data stuff and as you can see over here we have um, our create user and we have our get user function we don't want to create any more users uh, well actually we do need to actually create some users so let's go ahead and create a couple of users and we'll just go ahead and see how this was working before so every time we run this right now, we're doing create user, we're doing get user, and then it's printing, um, it's creating our user, uh, setting the name equal to Kyle, it's hard coded. And then immediately after we're getting our user and we're printing out each of these users using this uh, for each um, function. All right, so it's loaded up. And as you can see, we're just doing the save successfully. We're getting the save successfully and then our array right here and then some garbage from Xcode since it's being a brat. Anyways, let's go ahead and add one more user. We're just gonna say um, Adri, right? We're gonna run this one more time just to show that we actually want to have um, two users in there. One's gonna be Kyle, one's gonna be Adri. And now we can see that we have Kyle and Adri. So let's, let's go ahead and stop creating users by commenting this out right here and now we're just going to be reading each of these users so in order for us to update what we're going to do is we're going to actually update after we get the users we're going to update like five seconds later so let's go ahead and create a function that's going to update our users update users and it's going to be like so and let's go ahead and give us some breathing room all right so since since we have our users right here and we're fetching them we currently can't access them because we don't have an array storing this property. It's actually limited. Uh, these users are only limited to this scope. So we're gonna actually add an array up here called users of our users. And this is actually gonna be equal to an array of user like so. Uh, users, we like to make that plural. And I'm just gonna make sure that I have a reference to those users. So I'm gonna say self.users is now equal to users. All right, cool. Also, we're gonna be printing our users out like this quite often. So I'm just gonna create another function that's gonna run this code for us um, so that it's a little bit, a little bit easier, a little bit sexier, right? So we're just gonna create a function called print users like this. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab this right here. And since we have um, an instance variable called users, let's go ahead and stretch that out right there. Um, since we have an instance variable called users right here, what we'll be able to do is access it and just loop through those and print each of their names. And now instead of uh, doing that, uh, that for each, we could just say print users every single time. So let's go ahead and run that one more time. Make sure there hasn't been any changes. Stop asking me this. And what do you know? It works. Oh, ain't that so beautiful? Oh, it is so beautiful. All right, 
So we have our update users function, but there's nothing in it. So let's go ahead and get the first user. So first user, because that's going to just be the user that we're going to update. We're going to say users dot first, and we're going to force unwrap that because I'm a badass. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to access one of the properties and update that on that user, right? So we'll say first user, and remember that it we only gave it the name property if we go ahead and take a look at our properties for this user notice that it only has the name right so first user dot name and we're just going to append a string to it saying yo yo you updated bro yo you updated bro like that mm, like that now, whenever you make one of these changes, whenever you update some one of the properties of your um, of your object, what you have to do is you have to make sure that you save those changes. Now we have access to our persistence manager, which is passed in through dependency injection. So let's go ahead and at, at, um, access that persistent manager, and we'll say dot save. We're gonna save that context because. Um, we have these. You, we have this uh, user object, which is automatically, um, you know, storing the changes uh, whenever it's being updated. So it's pretty much activating the changes. So if we go ahead and go to our persistent manager, and we take a look at the save function, where did I put it? Oh, it's right here. If we look at this save function you'll see that it does have context has changes, right? So whenever we update one of our NS managed objects in a context, um, it's automatically going to detect that it does have changes, in which case we'll be able to try and save. And if it does save, we'll pretty much save successful, we'll print save successfully. So when we do save, uh, when we do try to save these changes, we should see saved successfully. And then we'll also um, print out our users because uh, keep in mind that they are um, that we are updating it right here in both core data and that that change is also being reflected on the actual user the first user in this array so let's go ahead and run that one more time oh actually this isn't going to work because we never called it Kyle the hell the hell Right, so we're still reading it, but we're not calling it. So let's go ahead and say that we're gonna um, call this uh, update users five seconds after we um, uh, read the user. So we'll see the, the names and then we're gonna run the update. So first we're gonna start off with a deadline. Deadline is equal to, um, what is it called? Dispatch time, uh, dispatch time right here dot now so right now plus five seconds so seconds dot seconds and we say five so five seconds from now and then we'll say dispatch q like so dot main dot async after async after a deadline so we're going to say after our deadline which is five minutes uh, five seconds from now and then we're going to execute this update users and since they have the same function signature what we'll do is we'll just say update users like so. So now five seconds after it's going to run our update users, in which case we'll be adding, yo, you updated, bro. We'll save that change and then we'll print out our users just to see what's coming back. So five seconds later, Kachiga, nope. Oh, wait, there we go. All right, so saved successfully. So you have, uh, yo, you updated, bro. All right, so. We did that, right? So it's looking pretty good, but Kyle, I don't trust you. You're you, you're you're fake. All right. Well, let's comment out this um this call that's going to essentially call our updated users, and let's just do the read one more time. Make sure that everything is working as expected. We're only going to get this warning right here because we're not using deadline. And as you can see, our fetch our fetch function that that's being called from our get users is actually pulling this um this user object with the name kyle dash yo you updated bro proving that i'm not a lie and that it did actually work so pretty good all right 
So the next one that we have to do is delete. So let's go ahead and add a delete user, delete user. And we'll just make that another function. And what we're gonna do is once again, access the first user. So let first user, because we don't like Kyle, hate him, hate his guts. And we're gonna say first, for some wrap that, we badasses, right? We're gonna say, we're going to access our persistence manager. Once again, we're gonna access the context on the persistent manager, and we're gonna say dot delete. So since all of our NS, uh, since our user is a subclass of NS manage object, this will automatically work. So anything that's pretty much managed by core data, you can pass in and delete. So we can just pass in our first user like so we can delete it, but you wanna make sure that you save those changes. So you'll also do persistence manager.save again, because once again, we made some changes. Yeah. And then um, we're gonna say print users. So let's just make sure that we're calling this delete user function. So we're gonna replace our update users with the, the delete, if I know how to spell delete user, like so get rid of the, the function call and now we're going to go ahead and run this. And if this works correctly, what we should see is it read from core data, delete it. It's gonna show us these and then we're gonna get another printout saying save changes. And then now you'll see that Kyle is actually deleted. But Kyle, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if you did that right. Well, let's go ahead and uncomment the delete function again. We're gonna run it, make sure that Kilo Loco is not a lie and when we pull it up, as you can see, we only have one object in our array and it's only printing out just Adri. So that's pretty much all you need to know for delete. All you have to do is whenever you make a change, whether it be updating a property on one of your objects, or if you're going to actually delete that object, all you gotta do, just save those changes. Now you're like, Kilo, I like sexy code and I, I, see, I see an opportunity for sexiness. I see that same opportunity. So let's go ahead and make it just a little bit sexier. We're gonna go back over to our persistent manager service. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna create some space down here. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna say funk delete and then we're gonna um, pass in some type of object. And as long as it's an NS managed object, then we should be as good as gold. From here, we'll be able to say context since we automatically have access to it right here. We'll be able to say context.delete the object that we're passing in. And we're going to run our save function like so. So now instead of doing this, these two lines right here, we're gonna be lazy asses and we're just gonna say persistent manager dot delete. It's not popping up yet because it hasn't been saved, but we're gonna delete that first user. And when we go ahead and whoa, 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 hold on. Let's actually create another user because we have to delete somebody or else we're not gonna be able to tell that it actually printed out. So let's go ahead and create a user first. We'll do um, Andrew, right? We'll create that user and then we will get the users, but getting users will not call anything on the delete. So we'll create the users. We're gonna run it. We're gonna see two users show up, uh, Adri and Andrew. Now we could comment out our create user. We could uncomment the delete user function and we can check if this is still going to work. So let's go ahead and run that one more time. All right, here we go. Adrian, Andrew, we're gonna see save successfully. Save successfully, now we just have Andrew. Make sure that I'm not a liar. We're gonna comment out that line that's gonna call the delete user. Just make sure that we're only getting back Andrew at this point. And as you can see, we just getting back Andrew at this point. So that's pretty much all you need to do for delete. If you want to make it look sexy because you're too lazy to write two lines of code, you just want to write one. That's perfectly fine. I'm lazy too. It doesn't really matter.
All right, guys, so that's going to be all for today. We're going to still be covering all kinds of stuff in Core Data. Don't you worry your sweet little hiney off. Um, but yeah, we're going to keep going on Core Data. Make sure you leave comments on which topics you want covered. Make sure you head over to kilolocal.com. Check out the membership that I do offer if you want to support the channel, support me because I'm a badass, or if you're looking to have access to the uh, exclusive courses that I will be putting out and some of the um, exclusive uh, content I already have put out. So go ahead and check that out as well. And I'm going to stop rambling right here, so I'm just going to say... Thanks for showing up and keep coding passionately.